Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. A mysterious man is seen leaving the prison at the beginning of the episode. He sneaks into town on his own, enters a bar, gets close with a barmaid, and takes a vehicle. The guy then goes to Manhattan to see Joe, a former friend who works as a hairstylist. Work, who is additionally a covert programmer, is astounded to see his companion escape jail. The individual begins rummaging through the space, destroying office computers as he demands employment. Give the address of Carrie Howell, a woman. Job uses his fancy laptop to look for the woman because he has no other option. He then provides the man with the information he requires as he departs Job's workplace. The man is pursued through the streets of New York City by a Ukrainian mobster who has a tattoo on his neck and fires at him. Be that as it may, the person makes a close call obtaining a stolen motorcycle and riding it to Carrie's home in Pennsylvania's Banshee. In the following scene, the bartender is shown sitting at a local bar in Banshee. He gets a drink from Sugar Bates, who was also a prize fighter, and they talk for a while. Through their discussion, we learn that the man was once a con artist, the nation's most wanted thief who has just completed 15 years behind bars. Sooner or later, they are joined by Lucas Hood, a newly arrived sheriff, who begins to explain his background. As Sugar provides the sheriff with a beverage, Lucas, who is new to this area, will assume office on Monday, it has been revealed. All at once, two men stroll into the bar, endeavoring to loot it. Our main man tries to settle the dispute without spitting any blood, but the sheriff immediately steps in. Be that as it may, his arrangement fizzles when the hooligans abruptly open fire at the sheriff. The man attacks the criminals as time runs out, killing them by smashing their heads against the wall. Sadly, the sheriff also passed away from his wounds. Afterward, when Sugar and our person are discarding the bodies, the phone of Sheriff Lucas rings. The man reluctantly answers the phone. What's more, it ends up being from the city chairman of the town finding out if Lucas made it here since he's new. Our man talks to a mayor while acting as the sheriff. In most cases, the latter then arranges a meeting for the subsequent day so that he can personally meet Lucas Hood. Since our person has old matters to get comfortable the town, he pretends to be the deceased sheriff. This implies he is the new Lucas Hood. Later in the evening, the new Lucas visits Carrie and discovers that she is the spouse of the town's head prosecutor, Gordon. It is shown that Lucas and Carrie have a history that goes back before she came to Banshee. They were both professional robbers who were employed by Rabbit, a Ukrainian gangster boss. However, since they took from their chief, they are needed in any condition. Lucas demands a share of the diamonds Rabbit was taken from them. However, Carrie, who is taken aback by his request to leave her alone, is shocked. Lucas expresses his frustration upon hearing this and reveals that he really hoped to receive his share of the money. In the wake of expenditure 15 years in jail, however, Gordon arrives at his house before he can continue, prompting him to flee. After that, Lucas has his friend Job hack into databases used by law enforcement to check his cover. The latter, an expert in his field, swiftly substitutes a new Lucas's face for the original Lucas's id photo in every database, making sure the cover is secure. The following day Lucas has a brief conversation with a mayor when he meets him. After that, he meets the sheriff's deputies and receives a brand new vehicle. Lucas reacts swiftly as he moves about the place. He sees a group of local criminals, the moody guys, slaying some. Amish. When the officer in charge of monitoring illegal activities in Banshee, Kai Proctor, arrives immediately, the brawl is finally brought to a close. He grabs the group's leader. He is taken into Cole's slaughterhouse, where he is brutally beaten. In the interim, Lucas's S location is demanded by the Ukrainian gangsters who stole the job at his salon in the past. The hacker is beaten when he refuses to respond. However, Job is smarter than they are. He instructed his assistant to retrieve all of the backup files beforehand and instructed him to prepare with a vehicle downstairs because he was aware that this would occur. He then claims to recover a few records from his safe, however escapes away prior to exploding his whole salon. In the meantime, back in Banshee, Lucas makes the sheriff's vow, authoritatively expecting the character of a sheriff. He is then welcome to Kai Delegate House for a festival. At the event. Additionally present are Carrie and her husband. Lucas requests Carrie to open the safe he recently stole during their private conversation. However, 
She vehemently declines, claiming that she is no longer engaged in dirty work. When she returns, Cole unexpectedly shows up and strikes Lucas from the back, delivering him oblivious. After that, he fires aimlessly through the crowd, still up in the air to kill Kai for the whipping he got before. Lucas, who has now returned to his feet, however, does so before Cole can fire, uses one shot to kill him. In the interim, Rabbit's henchmen were able to escape the job salon explosion and inform their superior. He orders them to immediately locate Lucas and carry that night out of rage. Lucas has a bad dream. As always, he is haunted by Carrie's memory. He reviews their mystery relationship and their final night together when they were caught stealing diamonds worth $10 million from Mr. Rabbit. It turns out that Lucas used a light-emitting diode LED to disarm the police so that she could flee, earning him a 15-year sentence. The following morning Carrie runs over Lucas when she is facilitating an open house. As an agent, he drags her into the kitchen, gives her a kiss, and tells her how much he loves her. In any case, Carrie fends him off, kisses him back, smacks him directly upside the head and lets him know that assuming he truly adores her, he'll leave and never return. Hansen, a drug dealer who works for Kai, is in the interim. Gets ready to toss a rave in an Amish farmhouse. Kai awaits Lucas when he returns to the sheriff's office. The last option uncovers that the surly young men will seek retribution as their sibling Cole was killed, the other. He then makes an offer to fix the issue, but Lucas turns him down. Later in the evening, in the morning, the Moody boys and their family wait at Sugar's pub for their brother Cole. Lucas shows up at the spot, however Sugar cautions him to avoid sight on the grounds that the grouchy young men just need blood today. Lucas then removes a sandwich and heads from the bar. Cat, Cole's widow, spots him eating their food at that exact moment and confronts him about her husband's death. Two of Cole's brothers use guns to pursue Lucas at the same time. However, our courageous hero faces them fearlessly. Until Sugar is able to resolve the issue, the situation escalates. After that, Lucas gets ready to go home, but a young, pretty girl comes up to him just as they're seen getting intimate. The day after that, an Amish senior learns about the rave through his adolescent child and illuminates the police. But he tells Lucas not to mention his name or the name of his family in the event that Lucas reports on the rave. Our protagonist accepts and follows the man to his vehicle. However, when he gets there, he is shocked to discover that the elderly man's daughter is the same woman with whom he had a coitus the night before in the farmhouse where the rave is taking place. We see the daughter of Carrie. Dava read as she entered the party with her friend. In the hope of having a good time, they begin taking some pills. However, the batch of illicit drugs has been contaminated without their knowledge. As a result, several of the teens, including Red, begin experiencing seizures within minutes. Lucas searches for the boss at the same time as he enters the farmhouse by punching his way inside. He discovers that the fundamental provider is attractive, so he follows him. However the last option finds out about the strike, and she takes off while discharging arbitrary shots in the air. Lucas and his associate pursue him for some time and, surprisingly, figured out how to kill two of his cohorts. But Hans and manages to escape in the end. He then tells Kay, his boss, what happened by going to his house. Kai doesn't like this one bit, as expected. Therefore, he uses a steak knife to cut off one of Hansen's fingers. He then gives the second man a 60-second head start, allowing him to unleash his Rod Weiler and run as fast as he can. Sadly, Hansen does not make it very far, and the dog easily captures and dismembers him. The farmhouse is back. The paramedics, sadly, were unable to revive Reed. Furthermore, he is ultimately deemed dead. Crying as I watch this devastation. Lucas comforts her and takes her home after she realizes that her entire life has crumbled right in front of her eyes. The following day Carrie slips into Hare's loft and holds him at gunpoint. In exchange for the stolen diamonds, she offers him a deal. He needs to leave her loved ones. Rabbit responds by stating that she will be liberated in the event that Lucas is delivered. Carrie, however, is unable to do so. As a result, she administers a sedative to knock him out before kissing him on the cheek and saying goodbye, daddy. Kai organizes a mixed martial arts fight in Manchi with the local Native American tribal leader Benjamin Longshadow. They hang tight for a contender named Sanchez. 
Who should perform at a major occasion the next day? The Cho's setting is uncovered to be Channel Moon Gambling Club, a spot which the Long Shadows have possessed for a really long time and, after some time, Sanchez starts sparring with the local Marines as soon as he gets there in his fancy car. He also offers to fight Lucas. However, the sheriff later declines. Lucas meets Gordon, the husband of Hope Wells and Carrie, at the boy's funeral and is invited over for dinner. That night, when Carrie and Lucas are separated from everyone else, she lets him know that he used to be thoughtful, yet he's changed. Lucas gives up Hope because the comment makes him feel uneasy. Well, I left dinner unfinished and went home. In addition, he believes that he is entitled to be cruel. Following 15 years of being disregarded by her, he went straight to Sugar's pub, where he met the Amish girl named Rebecca. Surprisingly, he had a previous relationship with. Once more they book a room and wind up having sex. At the point when Rebecca leaves the bar, she tracks down Kai, her uncle, hanging tight for her. She is criticized for continuing to defy her upbringing in a manner similar to his. Kai reveals that during his teenage years, when he was like her, he lost many people. He then, at that point, drops her home prior to addressing her on the significance of natural love and trust. Carrie meets Lucas that evening and offers him the diamonds in return for him leaving her. In any case, he doesn't acknowledge the jewels since he would rather not abandon her with such ease. In a casino. Sanchez starts having an affair with a waitress after inviting her to his trailer. They ultimately have sex, yet Sanchez develops increasingly more savage when he drinks some champagne, trailed by certain opiates. Eventually, he turns out to be forceful to the point that he winds up pounding her. The morning after that, the girl is barely able to move when we see her with bruises all over her body. She makes it to the hospital, which is a good thing, and the police are informed of the incident. Sanchez is also going to a cocktail party before the fight with his manager, when Lucas and his co-worker arrived promptly. They are here to detain Sanchez on assault charges. Lucas approaches him to arrest him, however Sanchez moves him to a fight. One thing prompts another, and they wind up battling before everybody. In the end, Lucas is spared quite a bit of punishment. He wins thanks to his unconventional but effective moves. Following the brutal fight, he then breaks the fighter's arms and fingers in front of a stunned crowd. Lucas is hurt and needs assistance getting home. Sugar takes him to his location, where Kai unexpectedly appears. Lucas makes it clear that he has no interest in making a deal with the sheriff, so he tries to come to an agreement with him. He is aware of the character of the sheriff. He doesn't dislike Kai or worry about him in any way. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.